everybody I wanted to make a short video here kind of talk about a change of plans we had if you guys remember our uh, non-selectively grazed paddock and our selectively grazed paddock comparison uh, we've already came back harvested um, our non-selectively grazed paddocks and uh, they're over there did really well on them harvested uh, at least another 120 animal days the acre over there um, but as we were over in this area of the farm, grazing that off, you know, I kept monitoring this selectively grazed paddock. And it was just really, really poor to do as far as re recovering. Very slow. Um, and, and also just um, when, you, when you pulled back all the trample, the plant spacing was just terrible. Uh, it, just, <laughs> it just was really poor. So... We couldn't stand it, and uh, me and my wife talked about it. We came out here, looked at it again one evening, and I said, you know what, we're going to go ahead and graze this off best we can. Um, try to get this trample out of here, open up the canopy, try to improve the sward density, and um, that way we'll get a little bit of stockpile on it, and uh, it'll be a, a much higher quality stockpile. We'll be able to come in here and harvest far more animal days than leaving all that laying over oxidizing trample that we left from the very first time that we came in where we were doing that selective graze on it so it's uh you know sometimes you, you change the plan and um and that's okay so it's kind of part of it and uh, that's what we wanted to do and uh, we'll we'll kind of maybe update everybody when we come back to it and see but uh it just you know, just again, once once we've been on the other side of this deal and we've been total grazing and, and following, following these other set of principles that kind of contradict um, a lot of the principles that we knew before, trample, um, while it does feed soil bacteria, um, there, there's, there's give and take to it. There's such thing as too much. And, uh, and even leaving 50% of the forage, um, you can see a huge decrease in sward density um, you, you know, you, you start to get into these grasses and, and, uh, go to the crown of the plant and look at all the, the, the growth points that are dying. And, um, and again, get into your swords of grass, pull back all that grass. You might think there's a whole bunch in there, but once you pull it back and you see that there's six, eight, 10, 12, 20 inches in between plants, you really start to scratch your head and you're kind of like, man, I, I'd sure like to have some plants in between there and uh and over there so you know when you start to look and and do the math on on what you gain it, it becomes very clear it, it's just it's really simple so again this promotes that whole mindset of doing more with less because you uh you might be you might think you're managing your land to the very best of your ability um and you might think you're maxed out stocking rates maxed out and uh, if that's you you know i'd challenge you to get into your swords of grass pull them back look at the growth points and the crowns of the plants and uh, start asking some of these questions um, you know could we grow more grass on the same ground and uh, i think a lot of times you'll find that you very well can and so just a few things to think about our cattle or finishing up their first break of the day um we've already got them starting to lay down and uh we kind of shorted them the last two days and we're trying to make up for that so um but anyway just wanted to kind of update everybody and tell them about our change of plans and uh now that i've walked over here they think i'm going to move them so They've got a little bit for their next fence lifter goes off. But anyway, just wanted to update everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. And uh, talk to you next time.